Congratulations, you found the beginning of the official high voltage for the Home Shop series. Good job. Now, bugger off. Get out of here and go watch James Burke videos or something. You should not be watching this video. This is the first step of a dangerous path. It'll consume your life and has the very real possibility of ending it much sooner than you had planned. This is the gateway to my training series on the illuminating arts of the electrical world. Here, we explore and discuss the entire spectrum of electricity, from millivolts to megavolts, from DC to daylight. The entire point of this series will be to teach you every single thing I know about working with high voltage. That'll take a whole 10 minutes! Through the construction of various projects, from simple circuits on a bench, up to industrial scale systems that'll make actual thunder and lightning. We're gonna build projects at every scale, starting with small handheld devices, all the way up to things you need a forklift to move and scaffolding to assemble. Some of these can be built in an hour, some will take weeks just to properly. Along the way, wherever possible, I'm going to show you exactly how and where to get all the parts for everything we talk about. In many cases, I will even make kits available to make it easier for you to build, learn, explore, and experiment. Many of you will not be able to build all the projects in this series, and that's okay. Even if you did, you likely won't have the electrical resources available to even turn some of them on. I had avoided showcasing certain projects in the past because most people aren't going to have access to $20,000 capacitors. Normal people do not have a megawatt generator at their disposal. But what's the fun in making these incredible toys if I can't share them with my friends? Even if you can't build every one of these yourselves, the lessons learned in studying their inner workings apply at all scales and will prove valuable in your education. So, I'm including them here as brain food and inspiration. Sometimes you just want to see big lightning and explosions. We're going to play with capacitors small enough to fit one on your fingertip and large enough to sublimate your arm. This series will be filled with things that will readily kill you the moment you don't respect them. Take a moment. Let that marinate. This isn't the sunshine and happiness kind of science channel. This is real. My classroom isn't a safe space, and the only time you're going to get warm, fuzzy feelings in my lab is if you're on fire. I'm here in an attempt to keep you alive, and just maybe if we're both lucky, I might help keep you from burning your house down. But I can't promise that. There are no guarantees of safety. Lots of the things we're going to do will be inherently, objectively dangerous. You're going to bleed, you're going to get burned, you're certainly going to get zapped at some point, and the best we can hope for is that you survive long enough to learn the lessons that come with that, which is mainly a dozen flavors of wow, that sucked, don't do that again. Stupid hurts. It's not negotiable. It's a law of the universe. It used to be much more frequently fatal. We've made massive progress at making the world a safer and more comfortable place at the cost of reducing the concept of consequences and lowering the average IQ. When you see someone standing on the corner at two in the afternoon wearing their pajamas, there's a great many things you can infer about their choices in life. One of those things you can guess with rather high reliability is that they are not an electrical engineer. You're going to break expensive things. Even if you follow every single one of my instructions here, there is the very real possibility that you can die in any number of ways that neither of us can predict or prevent. And don't even think about suing me. If you choose to do any of this stuff, you accept full and complete strict liability for your own actions. I'm just an idiot making videos. According to hundreds of commenters on here, I'm vacuously stupid, gay, ugly, short, bald, mean, sad, wrong, fat, old, and smell like cheese. I'm here to show you what I know. That doesn't mean it's accurate, safe, legal, or code compliant. If you're stupid enough to listen to me, you not only accept strict liability, you deserve what's coming to you for engaging in ultra-hazardous activities. There are plenty of useful vocations in the world. You don't have to become an engineer or an electrician. Your parents would much rather you become a doctor or a lawyer. They make piles of money and have it so much easier than an engineer. When doctors screw up, and that happens way more than you want to imagine, their mistakes get quietly buried one at a time in an intimate little ceremony. When engineers screw up, people often die by the hundreds. Some team pushing a deadline gets a decimal in the wrong spot, and four years later a passenger jet turns into a glider that makes it all the way to the scene of the crash. Reporters start saying things like mass casualty incident, giant corporations go from record profits to massive recalls, and candlelight vigils with thoughts and prayers. But hey, if the Ten Commandments don't work, there's always chapter 11. All because one guy made a tiny mistake and didn't get caught by the three people after him who were supposed to check it. These things happen every day. To be an engineer or to work in the skilled trades is to have a backstage pass to how the world works. And with that comes a genuine understanding of just how precarious modern civilized society actually is. We all live in a house of cards built by people with imposter syndrome, run by elected officials who aren't even smart enough to have a love life without making the evening news, and owned by people who want to play Jenga with the cards so they can make an extra billion before it all falls down again. Lawyers get paid to bill hundreds of dollars an hour just to be pedantic. Imagine a career where you can get paid a top tier wage to write papers that nobody will ever bother to read. The best part for them is if a lawyer screws 
others up, their mistakes typically end up locked away and they can always blame the judge. When engineers make mistakes, they happen right out in full view of the world. Why not pick an easier life? You could get a communication degree instead. To choose the life of an engineer is to embark on a lifetime of relentless learning. You will see the world not as it is, but as it could be. You will develop an innate understanding of how things work and how things are built. But this knowledge comes with a responsibility. Your job will be to build the future. And the rest of us would really rather the future not be built by halfwits who don't have the stones to dig in and do a proper job of things. So go take up a safer vocation. Get a nice cushy job selling insurance, get a mediocre wife and a couple annoying kids and spend your weekends being one of those guys who actually understands the rules of football and worries about his lawn. Go find that American dream I keep hearing about. Because after this video, things get dangerous and unforgiving. Here there be beasties. Go get into model aircraft. Planes are fun, drones are wicked cool, and your first FPV flight is a transcendent experience. They're safe, filled with great nerdy things to learn in electronics and aeronautics, and once you get a kid hooked on aviation, they're never going to have enough money for drugs. But don't watch this series. These things are genuinely dangerous, and you're going to have to have a lot of skills that the world simply hasn't prepared you for. You're going to have to learn about safety, accountability, and one of the most fundamentally terrifying things in today's world, responsibility for your own choices. You're going to come head on with tangible repercussions for your actions. You're going to learn very quickly that science doesn't care about your feelings and physics wants to make you cry. Working with Tesla coils and Marx generators is weeks of relentless boredom punctuated with moments of abject terror. You won't understand any of it at first, especially why we bother doing this in the first place. That lesson won't come until your magical experience of first light. That's when you see the Tesla coil you built operate for the first time. It touches your soul and changes you deep down in your lizard brain. It's more intimate and visceral than losing your virginity. It's more addictive than any narcotic, and once you've lived it, you can never go back. That moment will change the course of your life forever. Look at all the people who build Tesla coils. Almost all of them are engineers or technicians working in turbo nerd fields with a heavy representation of the electrical industry. This is a game that'll shape your entire life. Learning about electricity and tinkering with things like Tesla coils has long been proven to suck people into high paying careers, solving complicated problems that'll impact millions of people. You don't want that responsibility, so thank you and good day. I said good day, sir. Thank you.
You're not gonna quit that easy, are you? All right then, you'll need these. Eyes don't grow back. Come with me and let's get to work. Hey, you wanna see something cool?